Hi friends, welcome to another video. In this video, I am going to cover these features of Peninsular Plateau. Now, without wasting your time, dive into the first part of this region, that is the evolution of this region. So, our first premise is that, that this region is considered to be one of the oldest part of the planet Earth. So, we need to go back in time. You might have heard about the continental drift theory given by the Alfred Wagner. He was a famous German scientist and he suggested that continents had once been combined in the form of Pangaea means all land, which later formed two proto-continents, one Laurasia in north and Gondwana land in south. So where is the peninsular India? See the orange color land sandwiched between Madagascar and Antarctica. We were there. I mean we were party to the Gondwana land. Now you can ask me what is the evidence? So in brief I can quote five uh, proofs or evidence given by the geologists, those who are expert in the field of uh, rocks, paleontologists, experts in the field of fossil studies and glaciologists uh, as the name suggests skilled in the glacial studies. The first proof is the shape match or the jigsaw fit like this one. And the second is the matching of fossils like plants and animals in these regions. The third one is that we find a similar sequence of rocks at numerous locations across the continents. Like in the present case, the bordering rocks match with the rocks of these areas. With this brief history of time, let us move on the peninsular plateau. First see the terrain of this region. It is triangular in shape but inverted triangle. In terms of slope, the direction of water flow in the rivers show that the northern part is tilted towards the north and northwestern part is towards the west. But if we look into the flowing direction of these rivers like Godavari, Krishna, Kaveri and many others, we would conclude that the general slope of this region is towards the east, meaning from west to east. Now you must be having fair idea about the physiography of this region, I mean the contours of the land. The beauty of peninsular plateau is that it has a variety of mountains and sub plateaus. Its name is plateau but then there are many hills on this plateau. It is difficult to cover all the hills in this short video, but we will try our level, level best to cover some of the important hills or sub plateaus of this region. So in northwest we have Rajmal hills and west of these hills from north to south in Jharkhand, you will find Hazaribagh plateau and Chota Nagpur plateau. It is worth mentioning that this region is one of the wealthiest region of India in terms of mineral resources and the region also has the enormous potential for exploitation of coal, mica and other minerals especially in these areas. Because of these energy resources, the total installed capacity of power in Jharkhand is 2600 megawatts which includes both thermal and hydel power. South of Chota Nagpur Plateau is the Gharajath Hill which acts as a watershed for Mahanadi River in Odisha. Just east of Chota Nagpur Plateau is the Ramgarh Hills, then Maikal Range making a boundary between Chhattisgarh and Madhya Pradesh. North and northwest of this Maikal Range, from west to east we find Vindhyan Ranges and that makes an apparent boundary between the Peninsular Plateau and the Ganga Plains. These ranges also have an important imprint on the diverse culture of South and the North India. In South of this region, we hear different languages like Marathi and further South Kannad, Tamil and Telugu. I mean altogether different group of languages under Dravidian category. This is a separate area of study and we may discuss this issue in a different video on linguistic regions of India. But let us go beyond. South of this Vindhyan range, here we have the Satpura range acting as the watershed between Narmada in north and Tapi in south. 
It is also worth mentioning that these rivers flow in rift valleys, signifying that this region is also influenced by the faulting and tilting in the past. Roughly perpendicular to the Satpura Hills in India, from south to the north, we have Western Ghats. Do you know that this Western Ghat is the second largest range in India after the Himalayas? It is visible from the map that there is also Deccan Plateau that is well known for its black soil, which is highly suitable for the cultivation of cotton. This Deccan Plateau was formed during the Cretaceous period due to volcanic eruption, basically fissure type of eruption. Geologists like D.N. Wardia considers this as the Trappian landscape since it is made up of series of lava flow or step-like arrangements. Are you aware that some part of the Deccan region is also considered to have good potential for hydrocarbon resources? We will see this aspect in a separate video on uh, petroleum and natural gas resources of India. But if you know, kindly share with me in the comment section. Now let us further move in the south. Here we have uh, many hills like Ajanta range, Balaghat range, Harishchandra range. They all are in Maharashtra region and then Nalamala and Palakonda range in the eastern Ghats. After that, in Tamil Nadu, you can find extremely dissected Javadi and Chevroy hills. Afterwards, in the west, we have beautiful Nilgiri hills. You might have heard about Uti, which is a famous tourist spot in South India uh, and also known for the tea gardens. There is another peak, Anaimudi, that is considered to be highest peak of South India which makes a meeting point of three hills that is Nilgiri, uh, Palani and uh, Kardamam hills. So these were the salient features of the peninsular plateau but geographers have meticulously classified this region into macro region like this and meso region like this and micro region like this. It is impossible to go at the micro level in this short video, but I hope you would have a fair idea about the peninsular plateau. I mean the prominent physiographic division of our country. If we look from the perspective of significance of this region, then we find something which we overlook. Like 75% of the coal reserves of our country are found in this region. We know that energy is one of the primary requirement for any country to progress or develop. So this region is important from this perspective. Now let us come to another significance. We all know from where we get the cotton and coffee. But besides cotton and coffee, this region is also source of natural rubber, teak wood, soft wood and many other types of woods. This region also has the finest tracts of fauna like uh, elephants, cheetal, python and black monkey. In the end, what I would like to stress that sometimes what happens in physiography, we miss the human side. That is the impact of colonial powers since they designed the map to fulfill their requirement at that time. We can understand this by changing our positions through postmodern perspectives. Like Britishers were more interested in the resources of India. So on the thematic maps, many things were placed as the resource, like forest resource for making the railway tracks, the black soil of Deccan region for cotton, similarly rivers for navigation and other purposes, likewise coal and other mineral resources for raw materials to support the industrial revolution of that time. So in the end, what I want to share with you that in such kind of interpretation of maps, what we miss that there are also human settlements, human beings with their own culture, beauty, perspective about surroundings and various kinds of languages, dance, music, variety of delicacies like I am fond of Italy and Samarwada of this South India. One can even find restaurants selling these items in the UK and America. So 
that's all for today i hope you like the video join me for more exciting stuff related to our physical and human world so goodbye and thanks for listening and watching